Well, now we get to Outcast. From the get-go, there's a very, very simple thing to explain about this one. It's an Alien of the Week where the Alien of the Week has an obviously obvious problem that the crew of the Enterprise is basically unable to fix because of the fact that it's the alien uh, culture's, I guess you could say, primary defining attribute because Planet of Hats and... Thus, the Federation is unwilling to actually do anything about it, and thus the crew of the Enterprise leaves and feels sad about the fact they weren't able to fix anything. So, what would I do with this from a TTRPG playing standpoint? Well, one, I would probably not use the Janai. Or if I did, uh, look into the whole like logic about why they're androgynous because of the fact that from an in-universe perspective, that seems to be wrong. As if it's something that someone uh, forced them to do at some point in the past rather than how they just naturally are. But again, the... the, the little we know about the Janai doesn't really give you a whole lot of uh, material to work with. So, what do we know about the Janai? Uh, well, okay. <clears throat> it's established that at some point in their evolution, the Janai had sexes th th the same way that humans do. And somehow that changed. They literally don't ever say how it changed. And the reason for this, I don't know. Also, the Janai homeworld is near a pocket of null space. And the reason why the Enterprise D is involved is that one of the Janai uh, shuttlecraft got lost in the pocket of null space. And of course, you know, uh, warning people about the thing being a navigation hazard hasn't happened yet. Okay, then. Maybe they just recently discovered it. I don't know. It's entirely possible that the pocket of null space uh, isn't something that they noticed because they just didn't fly in that direction uh, as a general rule. I mean, it's conceivable. That, I mean, if it's outside of a trade route where uh, people uh, travel very infrequently, then yeah, it makes a lot of sense it, that they wouldn't uh, notice it. Now, the whole logic here of, of them having uh, evolved to where they don't need genders is rather strange and feels like a forced contrivance. Like, why is your culture deciding that you don't like it and that it's now unnatural to you? Very... Oh, also is the fact that they actually make a point that the Janai culture teaches that gender is um, for inferior life forms. Why? That's something that I find to be personally very strange and why I, pr I think that the Janai uh, were probably in some way artificially uh, manipulated to be like that. Thing is, um, like I said, we have very few uh, bits of information about Janai history. Yeah, also, this is an interesting thing, is that uh, their current method of reproduction is external. Like, uh, children are not carried to term 
uh, through uh, internal, um, what's the word for it? Uh, pregnancy, yeah, sure. Let's go, let's call it pregnancy. So pregnancy is something somehow external that's, how exactly does that work? And um, yeah, not really a, a whole lot uh, to, to, again, it's like the whole thing feels forced because of the fact that uh, none of it is um, what you would expect from natural evolution. <sighs> That's honestly uh, about it for, for that aspect of the story is that yeah, trying to tell something related to like discrimination when the whole thing is a forced contrivance really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's like the Janai are being mean to each other for, well, actually that's an interesting point is that, and that's actually where the episode goes with it, is that the Janai culture is intentionally suppressing anyone who disagrees with the um, cultural norm. Okay. But to a ridiculous degree. And that is one of those things that kind of like makes it feel like a, a forced... Uh, whatever anyways so uh, the, the null space thinking that's actually a, a plot point that's gotten used in star trek several times um although this may have been the first one let's see here uh da, 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 da. Um, yeah, so uh, the, the, what we know about null space is that it's basically just like holes in the fabric of space that are invisible from the outside and, and, and only are noticeable when solid matter passes through them. And, you know, uh, this, of course, means that a whole bunch of technologies don't work because of the energy distortion effects. So you basically have to physically go inside and physically leave. Anyways, so, um, yeah. No space pockets, eh, it's a fun negative space wedgie because of the fact that it's the sort of negative space wedgie you could relatively easily bypass if you know uh, the nature of the negative space wedgie, I guess. It's like, oh, it's that problem. Yeah, yeah it's that level of negative space wedgie, not the uh, we're all going to die kind. And honestly, that's about all I think about this particular episode. It's one of those that spends a whole lot of time in the uh, actual uh, televised episode doing moral f philosophizing, which is the sort of thing that you're probably not going to spend a whole lot of time doing in a TTRPG. So it's, you know the general tone of the episode doesn't lend itself well to being used in a TTRPG as a general rule. And again, it's one of those, those moral soapboxing episodes. So yeah. And that's about all I can think of to say about it. A few ideas that you could uh, use for something, yes, but the majority of it is uh, 
yeah, too much soapbox, not enough plot. Later.